welcome to the PetCast, brought to you by leading pet charity, Blue Cross. Now, I don't want to make my puppy dog jealous, but today we are talking about puppies on this episode. They are cute, they are fun, but what is it really like to share your life with a tiny pup and what do you need to be prepared for to build a great bond together? In terms of training, it literally starts from the moment that you get your dog home. Claire Haynes is a animal behaviourist at Blue Cross. She is here today to talk to me about the ins and outs of training a puppy and how she spent the lockdown with a fantastic fantastic little foster pup. Plus we have Radio 1's Katie Thistleton. She is thinking of getting a puppy herself, so she's with us today on the lookout for some life hacks. So now I'm in this dilemma of do I get a puppy, do I adopt an older dog? I hear it's like having a baby. (laughs) And this is what we do on the Petcast. Have candid conversations around the big issues facing pet lovers like me and you, with some of the UK's leading pet experts who are on hand to give us their best tips, tricks and guidance. Claire and Katie, welcome to the Petcast. Katie, you love dogs, which means I love you already. (laughs) But you don't have a dog. I don't have a dog and I feel like such a fraud all the time because I never stop talking about dogs, posting about dogs on social media. I am obsessed with them, but then I actually don't have one. So people are like, what do you mean? Why don't you have a dog? And that's purely because I'm just so busy, but we're definitely thinking of getting one. And rumour has it you volunteer in doggy daycare. How? I mean, that is just like a dream job. How is it? Tell me all about this. (laughs) It's incredible. I mean, obviously it's a lot of picking up poo, but it is fantastic. (laughs) Uh, The first time I went there and met all the people that work there, I was just like, I couldn't believe it, walking into this room with about 50 dogs just all running around. I was like, this is my heaven. And I was like, is this the best job in the world? And they all sort of went, well, it has its moments. (laughs) And I think I'm really annoying because I'm like this presenter that goes in every now and again and they have to do it every day. Um, And I'm sure it does get tiring. But, oh, it's just amazing. I mean, literally when I work there, my job is to cuddle dogs, pick up the odd bit of poo, stop them from fighting, but literally just cuddle them. And they just climb all over you. And, yeah, it's it's so... And, I mean, are you like me as well? Like, I actually forget to talk to the people, to the humans. (laughs) And I would just ignore them and just be with the dogs. I do that all the time when people are walking a dog, like I'm looking at the dog. I'm making eye contact with the dog and not the human. I'm always doing that. And yet, do you know what? It's a really nice job, actually, like for like a a presenter or an actress to go and work in a doggy daycare. You don't have to perform that day. Like the dogs do all the racket for you. They're the ones being noisy and performing and you can just sit there and stroke them. And it's such a nice contrast to what I do on the radio. It's it's so good. I remember um, on the final of Strictly, they bought in two doggies for us just to calm us. Well, I found out about this. I went mental. I was like, right, <laughs> where are these dogs? And we had a Labrador and um, a Dash Hound. And I think they're like TV doggies. Anyway, I didn't care that they were filming for uh, you know the television program <laughs> I the doggy voice comes out and I'm just chatting to them oh it was lovely it was just so nice I, I must go and find a doggy daycare myself and just pop by and and, and yeah, volunteer definitely. one day so are you gonna get a dog then yes Katie? so I had a dog sort of growing up you know I've had dogs before and I really really want a dog my boyfriend is the ultimate clean freak like unbelievable he is Monica I essentially live with Monica and his fear is the the doggy mess and whenever we look after friends dogs which we do quite a lot that does uh, stress him out quite a bit but I think I he's a cat person but I think I have worn him down over the years by constantly showing him YouTube videos of dogs Um, and yeah he has said we're getting married next October hopefully COVID allowing and he has said we can get a dog after we get married. So now I'm in this dilemma Aww. of do I get a puppy? Do I adopt an older dog? You know, what do we do? Because we are quite busy. And yeah, I hear it's like having a baby. <laughs> well, you're in the right place because Claire, this is a subject very close to your heart, isn't it? So you've been fostering a puppy during lockdown, haven't you? So tell us yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah. So we fostered Akira. Um, when we first went into lockdown, we couldn't rehome pets with the travel restrictions. So we just tried to get all the pets that we had in our centres into foster homes. So we landed uh, an eight-week-old Jack Russell cross Chihuahua. So... <laughs> (laughs) 
<laughs> so my wardrobe, like, oh. very, very cute. Ears bigger than her body. Um, absolutely tiny. She was like a little guinea pig when we first brought her home. And again, due to the restrictions, we couldn't put her up for rehoming until sort of June, July time, I think it was. So we had her for that real, that, that time when, you know, everything was closed and it was like ghost town everywhere. And that's when we were fostering. So she really kept us busy. Um, I was, I was lucky enough to work the whole time but actually it reminded me of how much time like we're just talking about how much time a puppy needs because even though I was at home I'm you know working all day so and she needed lots of bits of interaction for various reasons throughout the day but she was funny she's sassy um you know and she's definitely left a left a massive hole now she's gone on to her permanent home (laughs) how was that saying goodbye yeah it was it's Real mixed emotions because, you know, when you work in rehoming, that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? Is that you see them go to their permanent home. And I, you know, um, like Katie saying, I'm not in a position to have a dog myself because of time and and work and life. So it's really great. That's everything we worked for over those few months was to see her go into her home. But all of a sudden, you know, where it's like you say, like you've had this baby for months, you know, that everything you do revolves around them. All of a sudden she was gone. And it was like, oh, well, what do I do when I first get up in the morning? Like, I can't remember what I, <laughs> I used to do, you know? So, yeah, real, real, so proud, so humble to have been part of her journey. But, yeah, very quiet without her. Much cleaner and tidier, but much quieter. <laughs> <laughs> What are the essentials then, Claire, about bringing a puppy home? So in terms of things literally to, you know, go out and buy or invest in prior to getting a puppy, there's actually quite a lot of things. And we would suggest getting things just like you say, before you get your puppy, because once you get your puppy or bring home a dog, everything's going to be about them and settling them in. So use the time before you have a dog to, to, you know, sort of do all of your shopping. So things like a bed, a food bowl, a water bowl, the real essentials, toys you know collar and lead treats a baby gate so uh, I think in a bit we might be talking about kind of building your puppy's independence and a baby gate can be really useful and it helps your puppy if that's already in place by the time you bring them home thinking about house training so when we get onto that we'll talk about how we recommend um you know to, to respond when that happens so appropriate things to clean it up such as biological washing powder rags or towels and also not necessarily physical things to buy but registering with a vet getting out pet insurance um and researching local training classes as well i think you guys might have heard that there's training classes that are booked out well into 2021 now because of the increase in the number of puppies and things so yeah some places taking bookings for puppies aren't born yet so definitely doing all of that you know well in advance would be really good so quite quite a few things to think about (laughs) how old should we start training them or or Mm. enroll them into their little (laughs) school (laughs) yeah well in terms of you know so if you get your puppy about eight weeks old to go to puppy classes they'll normally need to have had all their vax and things vaccinations so that will depend on you know your vet's advice of when they're able to go but in terms of of training at the risk of sounding like really cheesy it literally starts from the moment that you get your dog home you know so their puppies learn by their environment and they learn by how we respond to them so you know if you get your puppy home and they're I don't know they jump on the sofa and you give them a good cuddle that's totally fine but the, you're you're sort of rewarding your puppy for jumping on the sofa so I think it's that awareness mm. that how you respond to what they do is <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah, yeah puppies lying on the bed <laughs> so yeah I didn't do very well at that <laughs> I'm quite bad for this as well like at daycare we're not supposed to let the dogs jump up at us but I love it when they like give you a cuddle so I'll just be I'll just sort of go over and sort of gesture <laughs> sort of you know pat tap my chest so that they jump up and give me a cuddle oh no not supposed to do it but I'm like oh I want them to climb all over me yeah I know it's like when you go out for a walk and you say hello to the dog and the, the, the owners are going no no don't jump up don't jump and I'm like no it's fine and they're like really you're not helping me because I'm trying to train my dog to do that I'm like no it's okay it's so true when you're out and people are like no no leave the lady alone and I'm like no no this is what I want yeah <laughs> don't leave me alone give me more attention I want this but what age is a good age I got poppy I think a little bit too late and I if I if I ever did get a puppy again which I'm sure I will I would definitely bring a puppy home earlier I think she was about six months three months Uh, yeah Um, and I think that was too late I think she developed some 
some issues from unfortunately how she was sort of brought up so what is the good age to bring a, a, a pup home mm-hmm. well we would um you know the guidance is that we wouldn't ever you know recommend bringing a puppy home before eight weeks old it's important that they stay with the litter mates and their mom um at least until that age and actually you know if you're communicating with a breeder for example it's you know sometimes they might say actually for this reason or that reason we're going to hold on to them for a little bit longer because for, for their sort of individual development so i I mean, obviously working in rehoming, we rehome dogs from eight weeks old to 18 years old, you know. So I think if you're getting a puppy that's a bit older um, or a dog that's that's yet older than eight weeks old, it's just about trying to get as much information and understanding their background as you can. So you can kind of help them with that transition and work on anything they might, you know, they might need a bit of support with. I'm sorry, but I've just seen Puppy's bed in the background, <laughs> Emma, and I can't deal with how adorable that is. <laughs> it's like a little baby's crib. <laughs> Oh, Stop I it. She's no. just gone and got into it. And that is the cutest thing I've ever seen. She's a clever thing. She's gone, right, there's some sun that's yeah. coming through on this window right on her bed. So she's moved from the bed and she's like, right, because I love to sunbathe. Oh. And so, yeah, this is a little wicker basket that I bought for her. <laughs> I like an antique fair. And obviously my my, my lounge is sort of quite, uh, my, my house is quite white and creams. And so I spray painted it white. And she's got, oh my gosh. She's got two pillows, so duck down, duck down pillows, <laughs> and she has clean pillowcases everywhere. Wow, she I know. is living the life. Lady Muck, she is. Yeah, <laughs> she Lady really Muck, is. I know. I, I love that you make sure you clean the pillowcases every week. I don't even clean my bed in every week. <laughs> <laughs> I know, actually I do. I clean her bed more than my own. Oh my goodness, what so am I cute. like? No, Bless she's, her. yeah, so that, that's, she, no, she's having a little wash. Um, what should we think about in terms of house training? Because I remember you said that, getting your house ready, you know, mm-hmm. puppy, puppy proofing. So, With puppy proofing, dogs explore the world through their mouths, you know, so chewing things and things going in is inevitable. Um, It's really natural. It's not, you know, not something we can stop from happening, especially when they're teething and they're learning what their mouths do, you know, because dogs don't have hands. They're going to use their mouths to do a lot of their activities. So that being said, um, what I encourage people to do is to, (laughs) you might feel a bit silly, but literally get down on the floor and have a look around because often you're surprised if you think as a puppy that's really inquisitive you know they're naturally going to want to go up to new things different textures different objects and to actually just remove those items completely so like when we were bringing Akira um, you know anything like cushions that I thought actually if she if she takes that or she chews that I'm going to be trying to take it off her or I'm going to be chasing around the house with it and you know we can kind of set them up for success by kind of thinking ahead um, and anything that's kind of you know like shoes people often have shoes by their door or they have a lovely rug or something so thinking about things that yeah ornaments on the you know by the fireplace that kind of thing that you think yeah I would I wouldn't want them to have it then let's pop that out the way um and we did that, like I say, with Akira. Um, she, but then she found, you know, wires, and we hadn't, hadn't considered the because the, they're quite thick. But she started chewing them. So then we got, you know, like trunking that you can get to put yeah. your wires away. So we covered our wires up, and then then she realised the wallpaper, you know, was sort of curling up a bit at the Uh-oh. bottom. So <laughs> stripped a bit of wallpaper for us, which was fantastic. So you know, they're they're not naughty. <laughs> it's all part of their normal development, yeah. but you know, all of that, you can go around your house and really think, you know, where, what is it that I don't want them to be doing? But also, uh, you know, even you saying that about you moving the cushions and things like that, because they could have a good old gnaw and a bit of mm-hmm. tug, then we're sort of confusing them, aren't we? Because, you know, you go and buy all your stuffed toys, you know, your mm-hmm. the ducks that they sell in the shop <laughs> and to do and rope for a tug of war and that. Is that confusing them? I think being a puppy is really confusing you know like it's it's really hard isn't it they need to wee all the time and then they're tired all the time and then their teeth hurt and you know like you guys were just saying before about owners you know you you don't mind a dog jumping up but actually the owner you know that consistency if you've got family members that are like oh yeah you can you know you can sleep upstairs with me tonight or whatever mm, it wow. may be 
you know, it's that's it can be very confusing. So with a puppy, like I say, that mouthing stage typically and that teething typically lasts around three to five months old ish. So those kind of items that you think, yep, yeah, like look at your lovely, your lovely pillow spread on your bed behind <laughs> you, it would be a case of perhaps popping it away for that duration. So you're only you're obviously providing them with lots of things to chew, but things that are appropriate and safe for them to chew. And then as you start to see that reduction, you know, their adult teeth have come through you can start to reintroduce okay. like soft furnishings if you like that, that that you know that when they don't have that sort of need to do that anymore so that's all right katie just tell your other half it's only going to be a few months <laughs> get over it monica don't worry i mean the puppy will destroy the house but we can redecorate it in a yeah. few months can't we exactly oh don't goodness. be buying all those new cushions just yet <laughs> yeah this would be giving him such anxiety definitely. oh bless it <laughs> my, uh, my my friend's puppy my friend's got golden retriever who's like a year old now but um I used to do the thing of I would look after him and let him on my sofa but she wouldn't let him on her sofa (laughs) so I was just sort of undoing that training by being like yeah come up on the sofa and you wait you get a puppy and you'll be like no these are the rules and everyone and yeah it's amazing how you get into that mum mode of going no actually she doesn't like that (laughs) (laughs) or no she can't do that (laughs) I love the fact that you've mentioned the baby gate I'm just like that's hilarious it's like it's literally like having a child like yeah Yeah. 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 say if you lived in a house with your stairs is that for safety as well so they don't fall down and break their legs and necks and everything yeah absolutely mm. for, for both reasons so the one of the main reasons that we would use it and say to get it before you know the puppy comes home a little bit like what you said emma is that you don't want your puppies to come home and settle and then suddenly there's this new barrier there that's a bit confusing for them so i would suggest get, getting it before you get them and the, one of the main reasons behind it is about getting your puppy sort of comfortable with being on their own, but very gradually. So if you imagine they've been with their siblings all their lives, they've been with their mom all their lives, suddenly they come home and you shut them in a room on their own. Yeah. And that's going to be really scary. So we would always suggest getting a baby gate because that means they can still see you, they can still hear you, and you can build up that independence really gradually. And it, so it may be like a lot of people do it across their kitchen door, or like you said with Akira, we did it... Um, um, you know, on the stairs, just one or two stairs up because she, yeah, she was tiny. Gosh, if mm. she tumbled down the stairs. Yeah. So it helped her, you know, not follow us if we were just nipping upstairs for a wee or something. You know, she was learning that that was okay. But also, yeah, absolutely. She was supervised on the stairs. Bless her. What, what about a crate as well? Like, is that a good idea or a bad idea? Because I've heard such mixed things. I always thought, yeah. oh, it seems quite cruel to shove them in a crate overnight. I agree. And yeah. Some people say that it's good for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it totally depends on how you use it and like that again without sounding too cliche but I think that's the same with a lot of things you know with dogs like you think well a lead could be a bad thing because they can't run around and play but Mm -hmm. it depends how you use it so a crate very much I would be an advocate for crates when they're used appropriately so you know just like a human having a bedroom or an area that makes you feel really safe and secure that you can hang out in a crate that's how I would promote using a crate so it would be something that you make a positive area we don't advocate punishment as an organization anyway um you know that can be very damaging to a dog their confidence in your relationship with them but quite often people will put their dogs in a crate when they've done something they don't want them to do and that's like really really bad because the dog's they're getting confused, they're getting worried, they're getting scared of you and they're learning the crate's a negative thing. So the crate would be a, have a lovely, like like your wicker bed there in the sun, you know, like a blanket over it, lots of soft things in there. You feed them in there. So it's a real place of security. And it might be that you don't even shut them in there. It just is a place where, look, if you go in there, humans leave you alone. Like if you've got, you know, children or something, it's a really nice um, visual way for us to go, look, that's, you know, Fred's, Fred's safe space we leave him when he goes in there so I've seen a lot of dogs that actually love it you know yeah. they'll they'll happily go in and rest but it's the way in which we use it I think it yeah you're right and it's it, for me I just immediately saw a crate and gone oh no that looks really cruel and I did I did make make a mess up really with Poppy because I had a crate put her in a, a crate the first time I brought her home for for bedtime mm-hmm. and she worked she was crying her eyes out and I was like oh no Oh no, she's not happy in there. I'll bring her on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the so, end. 
<laughs> that was the end of the crate. And, I'm interested um, to know, like, what do you do in that situation? Because I love my sleep and I'm not going to lie, that is one of the things that I am worried about when it comes yeah. to a puppy. Yeah, having to get them get up really early, say goodbye mm. to your lions and, um, <laughs> and yeah, them sort of crying through the night. Mm-hmm. What, what do, you, do you do about that? Are you supposed to leave them and, and they get used to it? Or Yeah, it's such a good question. And I, I totally, um, yeah, like you can see Emma has obviously been yeah, there. Yeah, I wouldn't do that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what, like I was saying before, that it's so, you know, puppies are going to struggle, aren't they, initially? Because, yeah, they're used to cuddling up with their siblings or cuddling up to their mom. And even to oh. the point of, like, their heartbeats, you know, like when they're cuddling up to each other, that helps settle oh, the things. No, so, you know, <laughs> don't cry. It's okay. But, yeah, so that it's no wonder, is it? So what we oh. actually would recommend is that you have them in your room with you, but ideally in like Emma's obviously say like saying that she tried in their own bed or in a pen if yeah. they're comfortable with that because they're so it's it's a lot to ask them to suddenly for the first time in their entire life in a new home settle on their own and actually there's there's evidence to suggest that exposing the puppy to like that high level of stress when they're very young it can have a damaging effect so yes a lot of puppies would probably choose to sleep in the bed um, and we wouldn't necessarily recommend that as a go-to but if you get them settling in their own bed and sometimes that might be like right by your bed or sometimes people will you know elevate it a little bit so the puppies are very close until they start sleeping through the night and then what you do is you move the bed like a few inches every day so they're not like just sleep because if they're on your bed it's quite hard then to like shimmy them off isn't it yeah. whereas if they're used to sleeping in their bed yeah <laughs> if they're used to sleeping in their bed that's more transferable you know eventually you can have them out like on the landing or downstairs or whatever but I think initially yes I would be prepared that there will be a little less sleep and you know puppies their their digestive systems are tiny so they need to wee and poo really often they will need to wee and poo in the night and if they're in your room um it's probably going to wake you you know which doesn't sound like a good thing right now but in terms of house training that's helpful you know if you can if you hear them squeaking or something or moving around you can take them out and give them that opportunity throughout the night as well um because they will yeah they're not going to be able to hold all through the night when they're tiny (laughs) wow you know if they're a little bit naughty Mm -hmm. how do we sort of stop you know our little puppy from doing something we'd sort of don't want them to do without one sort of upset because I I feel I get upset and I can understand when my mum used to tell me off she said it's hurting me more than it is you and I do feel like that with the dogs so it's like I could talk about this all day but you know we've talked a little bit about setting them up for success so example with a puppy like you know, sort of if your puppy takes something that you don't want them to take, that's where a lot of it's in that preparation, you know, and trying to keep, you know, have them in, in put them into good situations where they're likely to be able to succeed. So a lot of it's kind of leading up to that moment. Another, I think it depends, uh, you know, it depends of what it is that they're doing. So, you know, when we talk about like mouthing and I'm talking about chewing and things, and I'm saying like, it's completely natural, you know, like a puppy going for a wee in the house is completely natural. So we we have to try and understand what their bodies need, you know, or if they're teething, if they're in teething pain. Because if we're telling our dogs off for anything and let alone a behavior that comes completely naturally to them, that's really confusing. Like you say, when you're a child, perhaps you're doing things, you know, because you're a child and you're growing and you're learning. And if you get told off for them, that can be quite frustrating, can't it? Yeah. And um, I remember if little puppies have an accident, like you said, which is bound to happen, mm-hmm. you can't frighten them by saying, no, 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 not in here. Like or anything like <laughs> like that you know because yeah. obviously you don't want to and I remember like back in the day mm. when you'd hear like if a, a, a dog had had an accident in the house didn't they they used to like rub their faces mm. in it yeah and I think oh my god I know my, my dad actually with with our dog <laughs> me and my boyfriend joke about it all the time we have a little sketch going where if I do something so if I spill something or whatever he does this with me to joke around but like my dad like if the dog <laughs> would poo in the house would like just point it and be like what's that to the yeah. dog mm-hmm. and we always laugh about it now because we just think it's a really funny image my dad pointing at a poo going what is that <laughs> um, but I suppose that's uh, that it's, must be come from a similar I mean yeah he would have never rubbed a face in it yeah. <laughs> that's sadistic it's yeah. it's uh, 
unfortunately, people, you know, and, and dogs this is are why... probably like their face being rubbed in poo anyway. It's not a punishment for a dog, is it? They do. Yeah, they love rolling in it, don't they? they? Eating it. it, they love they're it. Like, like, oh, great! Yeah, fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I say, we we would never recommend telling a dog off anyway. It's you know because it's so it's confusing. It knocks their confidence and generally damages their relationship with you. You know, if they're thinking like, huh, why are you suddenly really angry? It's going to make them wary of you. And what we commonly see with house training, and we see it quite commonly in older dogs, and you can kind of link it back is that where a dog won't toilet in front of their owner um and so the dog hasn't learned like oh I should have toileted outside they've learned I don't want to toilet around you I'm scared of going to the toilet near you and that's yeah that's much harder to resolve than kind of that yes having that patience but having that patience in the first place so you know like like a lot of times with punishment it kind of leads to more problems you know sort of going back to what you were originally asking I think it's about identifying why your dog's doing what you don't want them to do because we don't recommend punishing them. And in fact, we would, so say with house training, we would recommend like no reaction whatsoever. You know, they're not, you know, you're not telling them off. They're not learning it's a good thing. You know, you're not going to go and give them a treat for toileting yeah. inside. But all the advice around house training, like I say, they're going to need to toilet literally every couple of hours. You know, you probably remember that, Emma, when it's constant, yeah. they're tiny little bladders, regular opportunities to go outside, rewarding when they're outside. But yeah, expecting accidents, you know, it's, it is going to happen, unfortunately, but cleaning it up effectively as well. I mentioned earlier, biological washing powder because sometimes people are like you you know use bleach or something on tiles because they'll think it like obviously they don't want it to be germs and things but actually the ammonia smell encourages dogs to toilet in the same place again you know so it's that's why we recommend buy a washing powder because it breaks it I didn't know that really effectively yeah and it's it's so interesting because that's what a lot of people would do isn't it and they're like oh it's still weeing in the same place over and over again and it's because we're accidentally like oh here's this lovely wee smell for you <laughs> yeah that's wow. so funny how do you actually then claire um train a dog to go out go to the toilet outside mm. I, I don't i don't really know how that mm. process works sure you know, when we got my my childhood dog we we rescued her and she was about sort of seven years old so right. you know she'd already kind of gone through all that and she was very good it was only mm-hmm. once or twice that she maybe did it indoors mm-hmm. so how, how do you actually train a puppy to do that I mean I know we have puppy pads at doggy daycare mm-hmm. and it, just, it seems to not do very much they just go wherever they want <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally so you know, thinking again, thinking about what like a puppy's body needs that they're going to need to toilet really regularly. So one of the first things would be, or I guess the very first thing is patience. You know, some dogs, some people, um, you know, get puppies and it's literally three accidents and it never happens again. With Akira, we had her three months and at the end she was still having, you know, an accident every couple of days because I think she really didn't like being out in the cold. So she, you oh, know, she found yeah. it hard. Don't blame her. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, the first thing is, is patience and kind of that consistency that you know it's going to be a process and so yeah regular opportunities to go outside thinking about the times they're likely to need to go to the toilet as well so after they've eaten after they've slept after they've been playing as well super common one people will be like she was just chasing a ball and then just squatted straight away and it's like say imagine how small their bladders are it doesn't take much for them to need to empty them so trying to pick up on the signs as well you know that that they they, obviously every dog's different but very often they'll sort of go to the corner of a room and like circle around and sniff and then again puppies will squat very quickly when they to to go to the toilet so you're kind of you're you've got eyes on them and it's a big part of why we recommend people being around a lot you know not only puppy puppies need company when they're small but also because otherwise house trainings you know really really difficult so and it was hard working from home because I'd be like on a Skype call and I would just see Akira like just drop like the other side of my laptop you know because you can't <laughs> you can't take your eyes off them um, um, so yeah, taking them outside regularly, like I say, literally every couple of hours um, throughout the day, rewarding them when they go outside. So that's that. Yeah, you know, letting them say about treats. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, puppies are really excitable, aren't they? So we don't necessarily want to like throw a party because they'll they'll forget like what it, what even happened. They'll just be like woohoo. Um, but yeah, definitely a little fuss, couple of treats. You know, just just even verbally, just letting them know that they did a great job. And then inside, like I say, not telling them off just popping your puppy somewhere else cleaning it up effectively and maintaining that routine 
basically over time. So as they grow, they will, um, you know, they won't need to toilet as often. They know that the good stuff happens outside for toileting. They're not scared of going around you. We would say hang around outside, unfortunately, for those of you getting puppies at this time of year. <laughs> it's going to be a few cold evenings waiting for your puppy to toilet, kind of keeping that going over a period of time, um, really. And hopefully you'll start to see, you know, see improvements. I used to say, um, I used to use a word for when Pops was doing a mm. business mm. And yes. it's, it's, it's be busy. And yeah. um, so when she starts, her, as soon as she was doing it, I would <laughs> say this word, <laughs> say this word. And then, but then when you're training her and then you're, you can feel yourself saying it, be busy, be busy, <laughs> be busy. She's still not going, but I'm still saying be busy. And then, and then I realized I was just probably confusing the hell out of the poor thing. But that's another thing is language, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like my, my, two of my best friends have uh, just got a Bedlington Terrier, but um, he would say one thing, one word for, mm-hmm. I don't know, something. And the other one would say another word. It's like, stop, wait, no, stand still, you, you know, all these different totally. words. So that, and especially if you've got kids in the house as well, mm-hmm. if you, if your child is saying, yeah, come up on the sofa and the mum's saying no, and dad's mm-hmm. saying sit for something else, and stop. <laughs> and how do, is it, how important is it? to all you know have the same language for your puppy yeah. it's it's vital really like you've just explaining that then you wouldn't know if you're coming or going would you and no. and what what do I do what what don't I do massively confusing so again like I say especially if you've got children who are going to be chatting and saying loads of different things using that time before you get your puppy home to sort of you know establish right where are we going to want them to sleep where are they going to be on the sofas or not um you know and especially with children we often work with parents who will then you know reward their children so you know okay that yeah actually he didn't let you know the puppy up on the sofa and and using that positive reinforcement with their children as well you know you have to get a lot of treats in (laughs) (laughs) treats for the dogs treats for the kids everyone's getting treated absolutely (laughs) absolutely so it's really important and in terms of the words I think it's like so easy to just do it by accident like the amount of couples I work with and they'll you know one of them will say sit and one will say sit down and that doesn't sound that different but then you tell the dog to do a down and the dog's like huh (laughs) so yeah I think obviously if you go to training classes or which we would absolutely recommend you'll be using cues there but what I would suggest is um where there's more than one person at home is just writing them all down sticking them on the fridge so you're kind of seeing them all of the time you know it's getting drilled into you because it'll make your training a lot easier make things a lot less frustrating for your definitely have well. a, re- a list this is going to sound terribly naughty but bless my dad he's still she's 12 and a half and he still doesn't know the words Oh, <laughs> I, so I say, you know, like if I say Poppy, one of Poppy's a uh, good word for her is leave for uh-huh. a lot of different things. But Dad is like off. No, <laughs> you know, she doesn't know that word, Dad. Or, or you know, it's a, it's a terrible right, right, Liz. That is good. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm terrible at doggy daycare because I just don't want to tell them off. So I'll just be like, oh, don't. Don't do that, Poppy. You know, yeah. like just talking to them like you'd talk to a human that can understand, you know, oh, language. Oh, yeah, but absolutely. My mum says this exactly the same, Katie. She, she talks as if Poppy knows exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm like, now, come on, let's be nice. Yes. Be nice to each other. Let's not have that. But it's because I don't want to be harsh and say, like, leave or like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm basically a terrible doggy daycare worker. <laughs> So I've got this feeling you you are just you sound exactly like me actually just want just be really friendly and lovely and kind but you know actually is that sometimes Claire a little bit more harm than good yeah I think we often hear people saying oh they do this and it's because we let them on the sofa or they do this and it's because we've you know done you know how we've treated them and I would I would say not you know all like all of my friends that have got dogs, they're all on the sofas or on the beds or something yeah, like that. Yeah, bring them up. There's, yeah, there's definitely no correlation between what you allow your dog to do in that sense and, you know, unwanted behavior. But it's going back to that sort of consistency, isn't it? Is yeah. It's like, as long as we're happy for them to be on the sofas, then okay, you know? So I certainly wouldn't think that by giving them more choice or allowing them to be close to you, it's not going to cause any problems. And actually, you know how I was saying before about the dog that gets told off for everything and scared of weeing in front of its owner and, you know, 
that's on the flip side. If you use like positive, um, you know, training methods, you know, giving your dog nice things for doing good things, you do like you were just joking, Casey, about the kids getting rewarded and the dogs getting rewarded. <laughs> and it builds your confidence, doesn't it? It builds yeah. their relationship. It builds their confidence, their you know, I like to talk about it like they're optimists. You know, the puppy's like, oh yeah, if I do a sit, I'm going to get a treat. Not like, oh, I'm sitting because I don't want to get told mm. off. Yeah. So, Aww. you know, those dogs that you see that are really confident, they're really comfortable, they're really happy, got great relationships with their owners, even down to things like recall. You know, dogs that are worried by their owners might have a poor recall and then obviously end up getting told off more for that. You know, we want a dog that thinks, yes, what have you got for me? I'm hanging on to every word because good things happen when I'm around you. So no, I, I really would, we wouldn't recommend, um, you know, telling your dog off. It would be about understanding why they're doing that. You know, um, what, what is it that's making them do that? And what can we get them to do instead? Like for example, with recall, you know, people often think, oh, I'll tell them off when they do come back. And actually that's the opposite of what we recommend. We say, even if they've been ages when they come back, that's what we want. So we have to make a fuss of them, you know, yeah, even when, if they exactly. come back after a while. You know? Inside, you want to yeah. say, where the hell have you been? <laughs> you want to be like, don't do that to me ever again. Yeah, I'd exactly. be worried sick. Yeah, it's absolutely. And it's so hard. Like you can see it, especially when you're coaching someone, you know, and I'm like, the dog's finally running back over and you can see them really frustrated. And you're like, you've got to fuss them. And it's go they're like, good boy. And I'm like, yes, come on. It's really oh, good. This is my a friend's very golden good retriever is the worst at recall, but she's, she, um, she's managed to train him to get better at it now. I don't know what method she used, but whenever I would look after him, I'd let him off the lead on the part near us. And I mean, just completely ignores you. He's mm -hmm. called Hank. And I'm, Hank, 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 he just does not come back. And he just wants to run about the field. And I was just like, I, I, I can't have no control over this dog whatsoever. <laughs> Stick some hot dogs in your pocket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's Absolutely. a good one. And then, and then you see them balloon. This, yeah, I think I had no, to. I had, that's the thing. I think I would have a fat dog. <laughs> because <laughs> I just want to treat them too much. Everyone always says, yeah, you'd have a fat dog. I would have to be be careful that the dog wasn't getting unhealthily overweight. I oh, know. <laughs> what if what happens if you really are str I mean, we're laughing and joking and it's making it all like fun and games and mm -hmm. enjoying um, having your little puppy. But what if you are really struggling and uh, I'm sure this happens where you think, I actually don't know what I'm doing. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. Where, where would you say, Claire, to go for advice or help? Yeah, absolutely. It's such a great point. And I think just to say before I answer that, that it's having a puppy is really hard work. Like they're gorgeous. They're cute. There's nothing cuter is there than puppy mm. cuddles and that puppy smell. But, you know, even with Akira, like this is what I do. You know, I've, I've fostered a lot of dogs. Obviously, I, I work with dogs with behavior issues every day. And still, like I say, when you hear your wallpaper being stripped off the wall, there's no human that wouldn't <laughs> you know, think like, this is hard work. So it's what I'm trying to say is that it's really normal to struggle and it's really, really good to ask for help as early as you can. You know, the longer that you leave it, the harder it's going to be to kind of change those habits. So as I said before, we'd always recommend prior to getting your puppy to have researched some local reputable training classes, check out the methods that they use, like what we've talked about, that they're positive, um, you know, and, and using rewards um, and, and, you know, not encouraging those things that we, that we don't want to be doing with our dogs. But if there's something beyond that that you're thinking, yeah, I'm really struggling here, we would recommend contacting a behaviorist, basically. And it, again, I mentioned pet insurance earlier, you know, private behavior work can be quite expensive. So if you've got pet insurance, you can often get you know claim for behavior advice on your insurance so do check that out but ultimately there's um, a body called the animal behavior and training council um abtc and there's there's a website and there's members listed on there blue cross is a, a um, an organizational member and that then you know that they will be giving you you know scientifically evidenced and the best advice that you can get because it's great that we have the internet but like some of the methods we were talking about earlier you you, you kind of don't know what you're getting and there's and I think when you get a puppy I don't know if you found this Emma but like very quickly kind of everyone 
um, becomes oh, an expert. Like you'll be getting. I've actually been one of those annoying pe- pe- people myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you do. It's lovely, isn't it? The community and you share your experiences. But if you've got something you're really worried about, you know, if your puppy, um, your dog starts to show aggression, and there's you know something that you think, we, you know, we we don't want to be, you know, kind of trialing different things, and you kind of want to be getting the best advice you can as quickly as possible. Um, and that'll be by someone, like I say, registered, reputable. Where where is your foster puppy now? So she she's in her her permanent home in her forever home so when we were able to put her up for rehoming it's obviously weird like I know we keep saying this year is weird but normally we would just do meets at a center and they'd meet the dog a couple of times and take them home and obviously with the restrictions it wasn't possible so we we met up in a park and she's gone to a couple who were really looking for a project you know she was fantastic Akira but she did need a lot of time um, and a lot of support because what in her early life she had you know experienced a few things that made her a bit worried about certain things so yeah she went home sort of mid-July and is doing really really well so that you know they've obviously had advice and again they've got sort of their own um, trainer that they're working with so they can have that one-on-one regular support but she's really really flourishing and I get pictures of her like she used to pick things up quite a lot actually and the other day she picked up a dummy on her walk which is really hygienic but they sent a picture of Akira just walking along with a dummy in her mouth. (laughs) There's never a dull moment with Akira. So, (laughs) yeah, she's doing really well. Oh, that's happy to hear. Oh, that's lovely. Fantastic. Katie. What, what what are you going to do? Are you going to oh, get a puppy? Are you going to get... <laughs> well, I was just going to say to Claire, like the, the, the reason I want a puppy, obviously they're just so cute and everyone has this dream of having a puppy, I think. But also, you know, can you teach an old dog new tricks? If, mm-hmm. if I adopted an older dog and they had had a, a troubled earlier life, can you... Can you change that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's obviously there's not one specific answer, but yes, generally you can. I think it depends on what they've been through and what their behaviors are. But equally, as you probably know, there's a bit of a misconception about adult dogs in rehoming centers that obviously they're there because of their behavior. And whilst many are, a lot of them aren't. A lot of them are there due to, you know, human perhaps a separation or they've lost their job or they've had to relocate. So there's a lot of dogs in rehoming organizations who have you know yeah they're house trained they can be left alone um they're socialized and that's kind of all already been done so i think in terms of teaching an old older dog new tricks definitely there's no evidence that that learning you know and, and picking up new things ever stops um obviously they'll slow down like we do naturally um and you know if you do want a dog to do loads and loads and loads of training with and you've got a very active life then obviously a younger dog makes sense but yes i would i i think actually um older dogs or adult dogs we should say you know this could be a one-year-old dog or a two-year-old yeah. dog, um, <laughs> is actually souped more people than I think people realize if that makes sense you know for yeah. people that yeah don't necessarily want to do the chewing thing and the house training thing and or you know it's actually they can have a dog kind of come to them that's done all of that then that really suits some people that they can slip into their lifestyle whereas with a puppy yes, you do bring them up, but equally you don't know their personality yet, you know, so you don't know what they're kind of going to be like when they're older. So it's, um, I think it's just great. I think it's great that we have these options of what's right, you know, for an individual person. Yeah, really exciting time for you. I think just chatting to you two today, seeing Poppy in that little pot in the background, <laughs> she looks so cute right now, I can't even deal. And hearing you, the way you talk about puppies, Claire, has made me possibly love them more. I didn't think it was possible to love dogs more than I I already do. I already feel like I must have been a dog in a past life because I feel yeah. like I, I connect with them in a, more than I do humans. Me you know? too. It's unhealthy yeah. how obsessed with dogs I am. Like, I don't mind how they smell. I'm like, they're just great. They're just great. Climb all over me. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I didn't think it would be possible for me to love them more, but I think I do after chatting to you both today. <laughs> Oh, I love that. I can't wait, Katie, to find out what you've decided yeah. and who you decided. See, the thing is, I've, I'm frightened now to go to a rehoming centre or, or anything like that. Oh. Like, what about four? Oh, <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't know how you go to like a dog's home and leave just one dog. Yeah. Like, yeah, must be so hard. Please let us know. Uh, I, I, I can't. Well, I'm going to follow you now on Insta. Or, well, exactly. Well, you won't escape to... it. No. <laughs> on the social media, I'm sure I'll become an unbearable dog mum and post about a thousand a day. Well, I had I had a message from um, a follower that said, "I think you should put more pictures of yourself up 
because um, you put a lot on of your dog. And I thought, so? <laughs> so what? Yeah, so what? That's what I mean, that's me. I follow probably more dogs than people on Instagram. I follow a lot of <laughs> dog accounts, yeah. And I follow, like, the hashtag of, like, Golden Retriever, yes, Dash Hunt, me too. Beagle. Cocker Spaniel. So then, like, whenever someone just hashtags that, the picture comes. That's up right. Oh, oh I'm it. just so pleased to have, uh, you know, met you now, Katie, because I thought I thought it was just me. But you know, <laughs> you know. There's, 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 yeah, I love it. Oh, it's so lovely talking to you both. Thank you so so much. I could have literally carried on this conversation for another <laughs> four hours, but no, that is that is it for today. And I thank you so much for joining me. That's it for this petcast, but there's tons more information on our website, bluecross.org.uk slash podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please feel free to share it with fellow pet lovers. And if you love it, write us a review on your podcast app. It'll help people to find the series more easily. I'm Emma Barton. The Petcast is a Bengo Media production for Blue Cross. Blue Cross.